Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, for the XR Weekly News, XR AI Weekly News. And uh, here's me, Dominic Wu. And uh... hi, I'm Christine Ingoldson, <laughs> also known as Flutter. Cool. Yeah. So today we are going to show you the, uh, the, the news regarding to the newest technology, including AI and uh, XR and also more. Um, so the first one is the video game performance will go on strike over artificial intelligence concerned. So um, yeah, so we will have like, for example, I will share like the news that I see and uh, later on we can um, um, kind of have some uh, discussion with Christine sure. and see yeah. like uh, what she thinks and also how like is there any way or like a, how, how can we respond to th this news? Okay, so if you go and see, this is on uh, epinews.com. And if you see that uh, how um, AI is like uh, right now influence a lot of people's like uh, uh, jobs right now, for example, like before video game voice actors and motion capture performance, they got pretty good paid and uh, uh, because of them, a lot of games become so vivid and also so natural, so high quality. But right now, if you see that a lot of AI that can really uh, simulate uh, or come up with your voice model and pretty much use it, or like if you see there are a lot of automation of like uh, how you can do prompt and then they will automatically apply the uh, motions on top of things. And this really affects uh, the people who used to work as a, a for the living. So yeah, what, what do you think um, um, this, this happens and um, will they really need to find another jobs or will they have to reskill or they have to fight for a strike? What, what do you think? Yeah, this is really an interesting topic because it came up at one of my favorite talks at the AWE conference, which was Joshua Rubin's story living talk. And one of the points he made was he sees that VR acting could be an, that could be an opportunity for actors that are out of work could take on a character in VR and tell stories. And I just love that. And I used to perform on stage mostly as a musician. I have done some acting as well. And that really spoke to me that um, his talk in general. And so maybe there's some other avenues that actors can take if the, where they can bring their uh, abilities. And that was just one area that I thought was really great. And he does have a project that I don't know what his project is, um, but he has a project that he got funding for and it may have to do around acting. So maybe go, if you're an actor and check that out, you know. Do you have yeah. any links or anything? I do. I, I can, I can, I could put it in the, you know, give it to you. And so, okay, cool. so that you have this, so that, so if anyone wants to watch this, they can, they can watch this, uh, Cool. this talk yeah yeah cool yeah so how how do you think about for example if people used to do uh voice acting oh, and yeah, i what, do want to say what, something what more about they, this well what, yeah. what should they do right now I, i'll tell you what too taken. i'll tell you what also i don't know what they i don't know what they they can do right now that's and it's something that is disheartening to me i will say this as a musician um when i was in another talk at awe they were talking about the ethics of taking someone's voice right mm -hmm. And they were showing like Johnny Cash singing a Barbie song or something. And, mm. and I thought to myself, Ooh, I don't, I don't like that as a musician. Like I wouldn't want someone to take my voice and have it be singing. What if it's, I'm singing something that I don't believe in, you know, or giving <laughs> a bad message, you know? Yeah. And, and it's not my vision, you know, while I was alive. And, you know, I thought about Prince because Prince had a vault Hmm. And he had all his music in this vault and he didn't want people to release it. And I think they are. Hmm. And so it's like, you know, you're going against people's wishes. So I do think what we need is some legality of people. We might need legality of like, can you, if I pass on, you can't use my voice anymore, but I don't know. Oh. I mean, I guess if you're, you're gone, I don't know. Yeah. Um, they could just, that's a separate, maybe I'm going into a separate topic, but because I don't know what I don't know what to do right now. <laughs> yeah, because um, right now, I yeah. think. Well, the best thing is maybe maybe there's some legal 
action that can be taken by these actors. Maybe they can talk to some lawyers about it. Yeah. Yeah, because right now what I'm thinking is that um, if you see long time ago, uh, uh, robots replace something that nobody want to do. But right now right. robots is doing something that people really want to do. Yeah. They make a living like a more creative side. Um, yeah, imagine because I saw a lot of like a voiceover thing, but uh, I, I, I normally just tell people that there are for creators, there are two types of way, maybe more. Uh, for other sectors, but uh, main ways to make money. One is trade your hours uh, and trade your skills to help other people to build their product. And you got like hourly or salary based uh, to help others using your skills. And the other way is that you, uh, you build your own product and you yeah. monetize through your own product. So for AI, it's really, I would say, um, not so good for the first one, which you trade your skills to help others build their own product because AI can help, you, you know, like a lot of people right now, if you see UX design or mm -hmm. even engineer uh, or even XR, a lot of companies start shrinking uh, their staff. And the reason why is because you see all the technologies is making individuals so powerful if you integrate with AI. And according to Vino's uh, prediction, the first one is that if you don't know who's Vino, he is one of the kind of like the Silicon Valley investors, like he okay. invests like a DoorDash or some, some big companies. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he saw a lot of futuristic startups. And then he said the first prediction is the future of labors and the expertise mm -hmm. will be nearly free. So right now I can see a lot of expertise is starting getting free right now. If you see like a copywriting, right? right and the right. voiceover. And if you see like a before graphic designer can make something and now- yes, now we have Canva. Yeah, now we have it. Yeah, Canva. So- you can see a lot of expertise becomes free and that comes to the second one. For example, like if you are a product owner and trying to build your own startup, it actually benefits you because you can have almost zero budget or very low budget, you can create your own product. But it all comes to a question is that, is your product disposable? For example, if you use the no-code building stuff, because it's so cheap and no cost. So everybody can do it and no skill barrier. So mm -hmm. everybody can do it. So what can re like what can the majority of humanity do? So this is this like is come up with question. like a very deep <gasps> question. I love this question. No, and this is, cause I was writing down, yeah, just a comment when, as you were talking and as, and, and I don't wanna just like not give an answer to people that are struggling that, you know, where this is, and this is taking away their craft. You know, this, this is a question that I, this is why I got into this. It, it, you know, what makes us human? And how can we maintain our humanity as this technology quickly progresses? And it's a question that I have not answered yet, but that's why I'm creating the art that I am in VR. And the storytelling that I'm specifically doing is to have us all reflect and, and look at that. And it's it's a wonderful time, too, if you think of the positive thing, angle of things, of, of, of really people to show their creativity and how can these actors band together and maybe like you're saying, create something of create a product, create something new. And it, that human ingenuity is what can maybe overcome, you know, just the, what we've programmed <laughs> into these AI in technology uh, programs. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, this is still no answer. And I know this right. is like the entire revolution, right? Before it was robot uh, and yeah. start making a lot of factories. So a lot of people used to do the manual work and being replaced. But right now is that people, the white columns, right? Um, and yeah. start getting less and less and people only hire the senior, the top three, like elites, right. they got hired. And for example, right now I'm a teacher in a community college, which yeah. everybody was asking, how can I get a job? And I, I don't want to say that because, you know, when people ask like, oh, what's the XR job market? It was like, okay, if the senior is still looking for something, then 
I, I, I don't know how to help junior. You know what I'm saying? That's where I struggled yeah. when I, when I, when I taught at XR Terra, I did struggle because, you know, I wasn't, sh- yeah, I did struggle with that a little bit. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> Cause so. when you don't see some of the openings or, you know, yeah. and I really do think it's about, if I were to talk to a junior, I would say putting yourself out there on some level, mm-hmm. you, you know, to, to talk to people, to uh, post some of your work, whether it's on a portfolio site and to show your vision and mm-hmm. how you're unique and how you're different. And that is the question. And that's what I'm here to help hopefully answer <laughs> something that we cannot forget. I just don't think that AI or the technology or robots will take away us as human beings. And so if we explore that, uh, yeah, I believe we can maintain it. Yeah. And also what I suggest is that I, 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 I totally agree with you, put yourself out there and maybe more aggressively is that yeah. since, since there's no job market out, out there, because I even have somebody junior uh, raw email on LinkedIn and asked me like, hey, uh, I am learning or join some book games of XR. And later on, I start, I try to find like an XR product designer and I find there's none. I was like, yeah, and then I, I did it. I and I was like, yeah, there's none. And normally they are looking for somebody like an XR engineer and they expect you to know design, 3D modeling, everything. Expect to, you to know the entire world and give you a big, uh, you know, a salary pack. Normally, it's like that one person, and they want that person to know everything, and it's very rare. Uh, and uh, at AWE, Orin Bar also said that right now, all the good XR studios is about less than five people. The best wow. one normally yeah. is like a less and less, and everybody wear wear so different hats. hats. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, it, it seems like all, only elite, if you want to get the traditional path, like our parents did, like, oh, great day and get a job. So I totally I encourage the co- college student just to, you you guys just form your I studio. was just going to say that. Yeah. Yes. Just, just collaborate. Thing. Instead, yeah. of, instead, of, instead of going on LinkedIn and seeing, oh my gosh, over a hundred people have applied for this. Yeah, right. Go find other people that are talented that resonate with you or have a similar vision and come up with a product together or come up with a solution or something Mm. you want to get out into the world. And so I think, I mean, and it does take some time, Mm. but it's also fun to meet people. And when you do find those people that resonate with you, it's very Mm. exciting. Yeah. yeah. Because it has taken me a few years, yeah, to find, you know, people that I want to work with and, you know, that resonate with me and then, yeah, and then build something together. So I think that, yeah. Yeah. So I I think the only way out is trying to start your own thing because AI collaborate, collaborate together, not, not, (laughs) not compete. Yeah. Right. Right. So so, (laughs) against people, I mean, you're going to compete, you know, of course, in, in in the marketplace, but that's different. I, I, I mean, in a positive way. Yeah. 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 And I do think that in the future, probably not really for like how to apply a job, but also how to present yourself as a yeah. individual brand. And also, um, I, I usually said that if you come up with a product idea, if you build it, if it is success, right, um, you get fundings, you get yeah. all the support, you, you, you are successful. If it is fail, which is very likely, then it becomes your portfolio, right? So Either way you win. So yeah. Yeah. And you're going to, and you're going to learn from those mistakes. So, and then know how to craft whatever you want to create even better. So yeah. So it's a good thing to just do it really. Yeah. (laughs) My best advice is do it and try (laughs) not to think too hard. I, I can overthink and overanalyze things. So yeah, I, me I, too. I, I'm taking my own advice here, but <laughs> yeah, I, I think it just do it. Sometimes we need to have like a pause our thinking because today I just saw Gary V. He posted yeah. something that, for example, if you have a huge ambitious, you want to accomplish something really, really big, you need to have a huge passion to, to, to keep failure. Because for example, sometimes I, I'm working on my Edgar game as well. And every time was like, oh, I need to redo it again. Oh, because 
it, they have like 18 paragraphs and I just do two and I didn't marginalize do the programming. So I need to go back and audit everything. And I put Excel sheet, which I normally not doing. And I have to audit each, each things and I trying to make everything compact as marginal. Yeah, I was doing all this. I was like, oh, auditing the, the, the entire different things. And yeah, it's like a more like film directors doing so. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's like a, a, a lot of frustrations, but it's rewarding. Yeah, it's a tough one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. What other yeah. news do you have? Yeah. yeah. Um, do you want to share your news? Oh, let me share a news. Okay. <laughs> what is a, I'll share <laughs> my screen. Okay. All right. So I hope you can see this. Yeah. So I found this. This was so search GPT has just been launched by OpenAI to challenge Google search, which we are all very familiar with. And I thought this was really interesting. It is a direct challenge to Google, yes. and it's only going to open to 10,000 people that are on a waiting list. And I believe this was just a few days ago on Thursday. And let me see what is also that I have on my notes here. And so there will be links similar to a search engine. Mm -hmm. And yeah, towards the end, there was a paragraph that I thought was very good. Ooh. So yeah, search GPT will instead provide up-to-date information from the web while giving you clear links to relevant sources because Earlier in this, they were saying that, you know, Google's AI has faced issues where if, you know, it would tell users to <laughs> eat rocks to be healthy or glue cheese to pizza. And, and so they just thought, yeah, so, so with this, um, it's going to give you links to relevant sources. And then the new search tool will be able to access sites, even if they've this is interesting. Even if they've opted out of training mm -hmm. open AI's generative AI tools, such as chat GPT. So they, they are going to still be able to access sites that have opted out. Interesting. So I just wanted to bring that up because I thought that was interesting. Any yeah. thoughts on this one? Yeah. I, I think that the before Google was dominant uh, for the search engine. Yeah. And right now Google was getting worse and worse because they probably want to monetize it. So if you search yes. the first page is like, I would say 50% are paid uh, search. And sometimes it's not what we are looking for. I think with the chat GPT trying to replace the search engine, it's good or I, I, I don't know mm -hmm. what, what's the boundary of this. Uh, we all know that um, AI will do a lot of hallucination, but if you put the source for uh, whatever you are looking for, like uh, uh, publicity, uh, that, that one which has a lot of source, you can click. Yeah, I would say this might replace uh, Google search. And what Google can do, you see like the Google AI is already kind of a little behind. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what Google and Google Glass was failed. I, I don't want to put so many negativities. Google definitely did a lot of good things. And right now they are getting challenged by, by AI chatbot, which is about to take over the search engine. Yeah. Yeah. One of my other stories, I know, I don't want to. Yeah, be too negative on Google, but it was just <laughs> a, a top story too, was that about their, um, their Google Glass 2 rumors are not true. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Yeah. Should I just put that up since it goes yeah, with yeah, this, yeah, yeah, since yeah, yeah. we're talking? Like, I do have stories that relate to each other. So, um, and what I found interesting about this is yeah, so I guess there were rumors that they were going to launch a product. However, they said, no, they want a partner to bring it to market. Google does not want the glasses 
to be pixel glasses, they're saying that that's what Iris was, if you know what that was, which was an unreleased pair of AR glasses um, that they worked on for a lot of many years, but then it was canceled in 2023. Mm -hmm. And then what was another nice, a couple of things that they said that was interesting. Um, yeah, they just want someone else to take the risk in making this product. And they just don't have a real vision right now in entering the XR space mm. right now. That's what they said. And what was another part of this that I kind of liked. Mm. The outlook was also interesting. Yeah, countering Google's interest in Essler. I don't know how to say this. <laughs> um, so Meta is also debating buying a stake of the company of oh. Lux, Lux, Luxatia, potentially to prevent being shut out of, from its Ray-Ban partnership in the future. And so that's what I thought was interesting. And, and then later it says that Google stepped in to block Samsung from wow. doing the deal with Facebook and Meta. <laughs> Oh, those like competition. So, I mean, there's a lot of competition. So, so it's like, okay, we're not in the XR space, but look at all this competition. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That, that, wow. that is happening. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would say that so maybe Google do can do some. Um, it's sad that Google before uh, Google had a lot of innovations, but oh, probably definitely. because I, I don't know for if they are ready to launch the device, maybe they can have some some um, support for example like a, like a meta which i'm going to present later that meta has a lot of support for their device for the developer mm -hmm. unlike apple it, a lot of people are complaining about like so oh true. i am the vision pro developer but I, I didn't get any grants from apple i'm trying to build things and it's extremely expensive just to build uh the product and it's like no supports and tons of restrictions. And they need apps. And I think yeah. that that's where Meta doesn't want to, you know, like is going to succeed because they're they're supporting developers. I yeah. can't afford one to buy the Vision Pro headset, but then mm -hmm. you have to get all into that Apple ecosystem. You have to yeah, buy the 8, computer. 000. Yeah. I mean, you need at least 10 grand or so or more yeah. to just to just develop. And then yeah. is your app going to be successful or not? That's a huge risk for a developer that's maybe solo yeah. indie developer, you know, like me. So uh, I find that really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So go ahead. Yeah. So I always said that maybe uh, Google uh, can learn from if they want their device successful and if they have good device, they can probably look at, uh, you know, Meta. Recently, I just... I mean, I, I, I know that uh, before Christine mentioned that um, it, it's pretty good to keep searching for fundings or <laughs> some opportunities for somebody to invest, but more like a money side of the, the creative business. Because for me, I didn't, like long time ago, I, I create a business. And uh, for me, I didn't, I, I feel like I like the business side of me in the past. So it didn't go well. And before I earned a lot of money and it's all thrown into the, I wouldn't, I would say thrown into the water. So it feels like sometimes we just know something from our guts, but we didn't think of the uh, business side or money side. So this time, I mean, I'm back. <laughs> Resilience, yeah. I'm back. I'm just still trying to uh, build some interesting product so I'm and and it relates to XR I'm turning the literature into the XR and with AI assistant so I'm thinking about is there any way I can get some support from big companies since I'm working pretty much for them and they can get cuts if my stuff's successful right so I keep looking for and I just keep looking for and this one comes to my mind is that build interest and hobbies apps on um, MetaQuest. So if you can see my screen, it's, it says that, um, yeah, developers are already building successful lifestyle apps on Quest and are experimenting with new categories such as cooking, reading, fashion. Uh, they are thrilled to see this. Uh, usually people said that this is non-game sector, right? Because we all know mm -hmm. that game is great, but 99% of games does, doesn't make money, 
right? Because game is kind of additional things and voluntarily things and not many good games out there and a lot of games just put in the store. So I think a meta call is trying to make, uh, you know, VR or XR part of our life, which means mm -hmm. that we need more uh, lifestyle apps. So I'm really happy that I saw this. It says that they will help you with a lot of different things. We are exciting to support founders building lifestyle companies uh, on uh, MetaQuest through the lifestyle app accelerator. So it just said that they will start supporting the team. And uh, the, all they ask is uh, some categories and they want a deck from you. So mm -hmm. demos, deck, deck. So I mean that's uh, for us. If we are, if we have anything, it's probably not too hard. And the deadline is finally. I find the fundings that I can apply, <laughs> which is like a, a October fifteenth. So I'm still uh, working on this. And besides that, I remember on my LinkedIn, if you are seeking for fundings, um, yeah, this is more like a um, when um, more like a the other thing. If you dive into my uh, my feed, long time ago, I share, uh, oh yeah, this one is from this person. Um, yeah, he has all the startup investor list. So for example- That's a great list. Yeah, 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 dive into my feed and I will organize this and put in my thing. So go to my LinkedIn and if you see this post, and uh, yeah, if you click in, I don't know whether this is validate uh, the privacy things, but if you click in, it's the name and their email. I think it's all public. It should be fine. This person share. So you can see like uh, all the information that you want. Wow. Right. So what I will do is I will do either whatever presentation or video format of presentation, very short, and just send all of them. <laughs> Maybe there will be one call, right? After like a million uh, send That's out. what they say. You just have to keep asking until you get the yes. Yes. And normally right. in the book of Venture, uh, Venture Mindset, recently I'm listening to this, it says that in normally in order to get a VC to back on you, you they will say around 100 no's. So oh, you yeah. Get one, one yes. So we just collecting the nose right yeah i wasn't sure yeah i wasn't sure the number but i knew it was like a big number of nose and... yeah yeah so yeah so that's just, how i feel because because um long time ago i was doing sales right like a, when i was not doing well i was like a salesperson in like a sense club or something i remember sales as a salesperson versus the normal person they have for the opposite mm -hmm. thinking the normal person thinks that oh i want to collect yes but salesperson is collecting no. How many no's rejections you collect? And we mark. And today, yeah. for example, I want to collect 300 no's. So I'm like, if you got no, that's great. It's just, yeah, I got one no. So it's like, yeah, it's different ways. So yeah. I see for, that because it's like you're out there and you're talking to people, you yeah. know, and that's what that's signifying too. Yeah. Mm. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So this is something cool. that I have for more people who are looking for fundings. All right. Cool. Anything you want to share? Yeah, I have two more. I mean, I have another one, but I think kind of not sure. It sounded interesting, but I'm not sure of the technology. So I'm, like, I don't <laughs> no know. Worries, no worries. Yeah, we, we can all figure it out. It's fine. But maybe I could share it, but mm -hmm. okay. Let's talk about what I do know. Um, all right. I share my screen. Okay. So I talked about that. Let's talk about Meta again, right? Okay. So Llama 3.1, I believe. So Meta releases the biggest and best open source AI model yet. So today, and today that means, I believe, Tuesday, <laughs> July 23rd, um, the model has arrived and it's one of the largest open source AI models, which the company claims outperforms GPT-4.0 and Anthropic's Claude, which is like my, what I love Claude on several benchmarks. And I 
did highlight some things here. So the largest version has 405 billion parameters and was trained with over 16,000 of NVIDIA's ultra expensive uh, H100 GPUs. So that's just some of those stats there. And what I found interesting in this article too, it says that Meta, let's go down here. I'm kind of skipping through this a little bit and then we can talk about it says that it used synthetic data or data generated by a model rather than humans to have the 405 billion parameter version that I was just talking about of Llama 3.1 and prove the smaller 70 billion and 8 billion versions. And they go into, so starting this week, Llama 3.1, one will be, where do I have that here? It will be first accessible through WhatsApp and then Meta AI website and the Meta AI website in the US. And then pretty soon afterwards, I think it's going to be also on the Quest um, in, the, in the next coming weeks. And then something interesting they have Imagine Me, a new feature in Meta AI, scans your face through your phone's camera. It captures your likeness this way and not through photos in your profile. And the reason for that is Meta's hopefully hoping to avoid creation of a deep fake machine. So I thought that was uh, nice that they were cognizant of that ahead of time. And that's what I want to say that. And then my next article kind of goes a little bit little bit with this but let's talk about this yeah yeah so yeah i i i mean i really love like uh, all those like uh happening but i i personally don't believe it's synthetic data because right. Right. because i know that meta meta owns such a huge empire of data right? and they even keep creating the data that's what centers. they say uh, yeah. whatever no, they I, say i know i know yeah i mean i i think they have enough real human data to train and also they long time ago i i, I saw the news that they are getting all the uh text uh, return files from i don't know quickbook or something i i i don't really know there's a a, a pretty big company uh into it into it or something uh -huh. yeah, into yeah, it. yeah yeah into it For yeah sure. like they got you know like those people's data. So if they only use synthetic and synthetic, it means that it's um, generated. And what's something before the synthetic? And of it's course, real the article, humans data. And of course the, art, the article says like, well, we can't really tell you because it's like, yeah, and even it's our, AI, our company yeah. secret. And I'm like, yeah. of course it's your secret. Yeah. So I, I don't, I don't really believe it. I believe, you know, since they, their action, and what they say is not really matching, but uh, it's great that it's, yeah they they have something and uh, it seems like you can uh, if you are a developer you can download the models and uh, run that's your what I like local lo lo local computer so that's a really a, a good thing but I I don't know whether there's like a, some secret code later on it will link back to Meta or something I don't know but uh, I think the intention good question is good. yeah. <laughs> yeah cool so yeah we have like a, somebody who or like meta who start doing a lot of ai stuff and i believe in the future i mean open is great but if you see uh what meta before they claim that they have like open vr or something their uh, os is open but if you see the open means that they a partner with a lot of different device which is still limited it's just yep. more open than before but Thanks it's not real me. world open right so so yeah so i mean the technology i i think if we didn't implement like a, a universal basic income we will still always like for example for the individuals right we i i always refer myself as it seems like i am a bag a bag, human shape of bag of data. <laughs> it's like all the big companies trying to get my data. I know. No matter I do, no matter I, yeah. And you see like my iPhone is always listening to me. So 
Yeah, so it it seems like、uh, we are more like a a a bag of data and for big companies to take. And even though, for example, like I upload my book to Amazon, right? Yeah. And、uh, I click one click, which is very convenient, and it turns my entire book into an audio book. Before I was thinking about reading、wow. on my own, but now within like a, a five minutes, and it's the entire. Um, kind of like an ebook becomes the audio virtual book, and the voice I can tell you is very accurate and it has a lot of emotions. So that part is very scary,、wow. and also yeah, it is.、Um, you see, like Amazon,、uh, if you see the the ebook section, it's、yeah. probably the largest, right, for their、yeah. uh, Kindle and also、uh, for their audio book. And think of that, Amazon. Itself has an AI model, right? It seems like、uh, they claim for enterprise it's the most safest compared with OpenAI. But where are their data come from? It's probably、right. from you see, like、I、and mean, we were I, talking I, about that. We were talking about the actors earlier.、Hmm. I mean, and like they're they could be reading books and making money, but instead、yeah. this AI is doing it. It's yeah, it's and I supposed to pay five thousand to work with a.、Uh, Voice actor and、yeah. wait for three months, and back and、yeah. forth probably about five thousand. But now it's zero dollars with five minutes. <laughs> yeah, so I I I mean yeah, I, I feel takes, like and, and then it takes away that that human that could actually be reading your book. Yeah, it's it's yeah. This these are those questions, and then I go back to that question: How can we maintain our humanity? Yeah, when this is happening, and we are just a bag. A human look shape bag of data right now. That's what I, I, I see myself. But it, it, it's like, where's my our souls can be represent? Yeah, yeah like、right. how 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 can we, yeah, survive in this era? And if we don't have a product, right? We just chasing for the skill set. For example, like right now、Correct. we need.、Yeah. If you see XR development right now, we need. Uh, like oh, we need a de- developer who knows everything, right?、Uh, but now, if you see this,、uh, I can share. And it、screen. takes so it takes a really long time to learn all this and focus yeah. and. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. If you see, <laughs> like,、uh, right now, before, three、uh, D modeling takes so long. Right and rigging a character, it takes really long and tedious. And、uh, UX design, it takes very long time to do research. Right, if you got paid hourly, it's great because it's a it's a very long tedious job, and people recon recognize your labors and pay you hours. Correct. But right now, you if you see those AI models now, they before we saw like a Mashley. You can do like a prompt to three D, right? So start right. with text and becomes like a video, becomes two D pictures, and becomes like a three D, and now it becomes like a four D, which means that you can totally do like a, a you know,、uh, some for example, like let's start uploading a single videos, and it can do like a different output.、Um, yeah, so for example, like a.、Um, Um, it 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 can help you animate, and you can switch different angles. So pretty much is the the stable video four D. What this means is that、um, if you see this, it's like oh, they can turn the two D video into three D.、Uh, before uh, in in three hundred sixty video, we only can see a flat right, like a, a sphere、mm-hmm. thing, and now it become it can become a world. Potentially, because instead of a、uh, thin layers around, and yeah, so and yeah. it's it's very easy right now. You can prompt to video and prompt to yeah three D uh with the rig, and then I I'm wondering that right now we need the engineer who can code. And if you see like、uh, there are a lot of like、uh, for example, uh GitHub has uh Copilot. A, a a lot of things that already you know you type something and computer can help you fill it out. So,、uh, my question is that right now, if we are still trying to provide our service, I feel like we are like a, a 
I, I, I don't know how to say it. We are chasing something because I feel like the technology、mm-hmm. is running behind us. It's like, oh, this part、uh, can be five minutes being done、mm-hmm. and professionally. And、uh, like, what's left? Like, at the end, what's the end of this、right. types of skill thing? Because if,、right. for example, before these types of things, it probably takes somebody three months of work and professional. Uh, which means that that person probably got trained for ten、yeah. years and twenty years of experience, and do this for three months and get very high pay, like you know, probably like fifty k for this entire project. That's it. And now it's almost free because you see they give you hacking face、uh, resource. You can、okay. pretty much install on your computer or something, and you can run on your own. So this becomes almost free. So what do you see the future of creators like? Yeah, I know. Like everything becomes almost free, and labors becomes almost free. I know. Like some of these tools, I really like being a, being a solo indie developer. It's nice because because when you don't have the money and you're all by yourself, you know, it is nice to have tools. However, but then that's where you need to inject either your human perspective and then ask those questions. And I think. I like the stories a lot. I, I mean, and maybe that's why I, I love your literature project, and、um, because it's speaking to our, you know, literature often talks about classic literature does speak to human universal stories, and、uh, you know what I'm working on is, you know, creating little fables and、um, in, in VR and yeah, it's. So like these tools help us create these things faster, but then it's like, how can we bring that human perspective in? So I guess I'm going back to that again. <laughs> anyway,、um, but it does take away from from jobs too, though. At the same time, so yeah. How how can human evolve? I yeah, and I don't. Have, so maybe as we continue with these conversations, we can keep diving into that question as we look at this more. Yeah. yeah, cool. And, and I get. I think my other article goes with this a little bit. Okay. okay. In the sense of, and then and then that's. I think I'll, I'll I'll end it. I'll end my articles at least with this last one. Um. Because I think I think it wraps up this conversation we're having well,、mm-hmm. in the sense that now this is something I never heard of. Um, next edition, but it's unveiling this XR. Mixed reality studio control and new AI automation capabilities. So what this is is it's you can it's a live production environment in basically in VR. So I thought, wow, that's and this is going to be shown at a upcoming, I believe, conference that's called IBC in September. And so if you attend this, you can put on a VR headset and virtually operate a fully automated XR mixed reality studio gallery located anywhere in the world. So this is an immersive experience that allows attendees to experience firsthand the advanced integration of XR mixed reality into live production workflows.、Mm-hmm. So this is making like journalism, I guess. Easier to do, and、uh, they talk about that a little bit later in in, in the, where they're talking about Llama three, and how that's you know the advancements in Llama three integrating with OpenAI's Whisper for voice to text transcription, automating content title and description generation for social media posts, and、uh, So they're integrating a lot of this technology into, and it's saying that this multi AI capability is going to run within Next Edition, and so there's not going to be an additional subscription or cloud or third party service incurred by the user. And it's later. It just you know is talking. So it goes talks about、um, where did I want to point out one last thing. I just found this interesting because it says Next Edition is a participant in one of eight new projects selected for the 2024 IBC Accelerator Media Innovation Program. The project Evolution Evolution of the Control Room explores how live production workflows are leveraging XR, voice, AI, and HTML-based graphic technology. 
technologies. It aims to optimize workflows using XR and AI solutions, enabling production teams to realize their creative vision without advanced technical expertise. So yeah, they do talk about, you know, it's including script writing and yeah. So, and live air on air automation, uh, users can collaborate on any scripts, media or rundowns if they have permission. So I just thought this was really interesting because it kind of relates to a little bit of what you were just saying. Mm, yeah. So, yeah. So this is definitely great. Is there any, I don't know, like an application form or something? For this one? Yeah. I don't know. I can, I can send you their, their website. What's this? So you could subscribe. Oh, case studies. That's case just their, study. that's, oh. their, their, that's just their, um, that's just their email newsletter. Oh, that's I cool. should look around here and find. Yeah. Out. Cause for me right now, I'm all, I found like a, that really interesting. Yeah. Go I'm a hundred percent looking for fundings and potential like a money income because I think yeah for creative I know this part is boring and also requires a lot of research and fill out a lot of forms yes. nobody likes it but it really helps us I, I I I normally tell tell myself that if there's any money related things I need to do it in the morning like the first hour <laughs> so I can feel like oh I'm fully awake and a lot of energy to deal with all the forms so that, that yes but 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 I think this is important because um I uh, when I wrote a book I I got a, some interviews a lot of people said that the reason why they can be there where they are today is because they joined some hackathons and accelerate our funding programs so right. so they got visibilities and also they got uh, backup like a capital backup so I think oh so maybe look at yeah I'm, I'm thinking look at that conference IBC mm. I, I was thinking of the product next edition sorry mm. no, so I maybe if you look at that I bet they would have that for that yeah yeah oh I have to just do a research yeah innovation I'd have awards uh 2024 mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I think maybe there are some something that um let me share my screen. I just yeah, yeah, please quickly go ahead. Google you found it. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah. So there you go. Yeah. It, it, it's more like uh see if there's any visibilities and also oh oh it long list. Also it's already finished. Seems like it maybe there's a 2025. So maybe a new cycle for 2025 will happen yeah, after this. Right. So September, yeah. yeah, is when this is, uh, yeah, the conference anyway, the convention, convention, yeah, the convention. So maybe follow up because every time when I want to apply something, a lot of them already passed or something. Yeah. So, so it, it it might be good if there's any ways that we can participate all this as a creator. I I mean mm -hmm. I, I think right now the best way is to create your product and yeah. make it out there and see if there's any uh, capitals uh, back, back you up and also see if there's there's a niche that big company is not competing with you. Because I find out that, for example, if you are doing like a WebXR platform or something, I, I feel like there are a lot of like a, uh, stuff that big company put on their roadmap and versus there are some small, very niche uh, product that big company didn't put that on their roadmap if your product is aligned with big companies uh, is part of their roadmap it's very likely once they uh, launch something platform and become their ecosystem uh, for example like uh, recently I just um, kind of like a uh, before long time ago I talked to mm -hmm. um, uh, you know leap motion ultra leap uh, people work there and they said that before Meta was their client but now it's becoming their competitor because Meta before it requires them to I integrate remember with, they did yeah yeah integrate with you know Holo, HoloLens or uh, Quest uh, put uh, to help with the um, the com camera side but now mm -hmm. you see Quest 3 or Quest Pro they have the camera doing outside hand, hand tracking yeah. so um, they are still figuring out what they need to position, reposition themselves. But I would say as for UC Vision Pro, the, the precision is very precise. Um, yeah, so yeah, so 
before big company was your partner, but now they start doing something and start uh, swallow your business. <laughs> and if they make it free, <laughs> right? For example, Ultra Leap, it, 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 it's a lot of money to buy that device. But uh, if you buy a device, which is $299, $399, and then with the really good camera, you don't need that. So yeah, yeah so that's what uh, startup also facing is like, um, yeah. what if, you know, big company just do some additional effort and uh, your product is along the line with their roadmap. It, it's, it's very easy. <laughs> To, to kind of your entire startup, just, oh, wow, what, what can I do? <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. So I have the last news, okay. which yeah. is this one. It's on face, uh, Fast Company. It's probably not the news. Um, yeah, three days ago, it's still news for this week. Um, mm -hmm. There's an interesting company uh, which is the kind of like the uh, warehouse solution. So this startup called Mi Mishra, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and they are doing like a modular, uh, like very simple way to, uh, for example, they only have like a couple of simple elements. And uh, before we thought like, oh, we need a robot, right? Maybe a droid yeah. to move the goods around. But now they just uh, mapping the entire warehouse as a structure. And once you put things there and they will according using AI and according to what's the, the best uh, things and move around the goods and make it wow, like totally. a, the, the best usage of your space. So if, yeah. uh, and they are funded by uh, uh, people who they call it alumni of Tesla and Rivian. So mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. who made this device is definitely has the industry experience and also robotic things. So if you see this, it's just like a very simple assembly with the AI and uh, they will uh, kind of slowly scale. It's very easy to scale and also shaped it's like a Lego. And uh, yeah, you... I saw that how it was shifting there. Yeah. Yeah. So it so, makes it really nice and modular to whatever shape you need. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I can see that before we need a lot of staff just to uh, package things, right? Uh, before I saw that, for example, like a, a lot of retail or like e commerce, like a Amazon. They Amazon, have, they I was need, thinking. Yeah. Yeah. They, they need a lot of staff just to stock uh and now i can see if you make the entire warehouse a module right and then you just need maybe human or maybe no human and uh, if you need something and it will directly give to you so this is like uh, also reduce the the staff yeah types of things so what do you think of like uh, this types of uh, very smart modular way and uh, the i know now I now I'm thinking of jobs getting <laughs> going away again. Yeah, um, right. And and it, it also it just reminds me of how mm. they were parking like bicycles, I think, in maybe Japan or I can't mm. remember. It, it reminds me of that idea. Yeah, but, uh, or, or like a uh, I remember in Japan they have like a super small capsule uh, yeah. hotel. So for example, okay. if you have nowhere to leave, and sometimes a lot of uh, employees they they work too late and they don't want to go home because it's very far to do the public transportation and they just go to one of like a, this super small capsule it's like it's just a small capsule shape and it's just allow one person to lay in and you it's like yeah like in japan they have a lot of that types of super small um kind of hotel and it has everything and it also has a small tv you can watch so i i can see that um yeah more people yeah i, I don't know like do we need I, I mean if the world becomes so convenient do we need so many people being there <laughs> being in the world i don't know yeah you know <laughs> Cool. Yeah. Any other um, news or any topic you want to discuss today? 
No, I thought we covered a lot of great <laughs> news and different topics that we could probably talk more about. Yeah, in the future. And in the future. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So yeah, thank you so much for uh watching tuning today's like a uh, spatial AI, XR AI news. And eventually we will cover more interesting uh for example git uh gadgets or interesting news. So yeah, thank you so much and uh see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.